Hello, everyone. <laughs> Happy Friday. If you can see me and hear me, put a one in the chat. If you can see me and hear me, put a one in the chat. Get my notes together. Let's see. Let's see. If you can see or hear me, put a one in the chat. And while you guys are doing that, let me let Instagram know I am live. Okay, great. You can see and hear me. Awesome. Yay. Perfect. Okay. Let me just let Instagram know and we will go and get started. Okay, let's see. In the meantime, where are you guys at? Where are you guys from? What is going on? What state? What country? Where are you guys at? Tennessee. Lenar, you are so faithful, sis. Every time I come on live, I always see you. It's so good to see you. Tennessee, Texas, Cali. Is M.O. Montana? Michigan. Michigan again. What is going on, Brooklyn, Michigan, Louisiana, Canada, Atlanta? I know. It's so good to see you too, Lisa. North Carolina, Ohio, Ireland, Cayman Islands, Jersey, New York. What is going on, everyone? I'm so glad you are here. So glad. Okay, let me post this. We will go ahead and get started. Um, Shoot. Okay, here's a link. Brooklyn again, Canada again. Yeah, I heard about the earthquake in New Jersey. My grandmother, she actually lives in New Jersey. And I think she said like her bed was shaken or something like that. And I've never known New Jersey to have earthquakes because I grew up in New Jersey. I used to live in New Jersey. So when I heard about that, I was like, earthquake? What? So, but I'm glad you guys are, 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 are good and okay. Okay, here we go. It's official. I'm gonna hit send, share. All right, here we are. Yay! Okay, so first of all, um, if this if this is your first time joining me live, put a one in the chat. If it's your very first time ever in life joining me live, put a one in the chat. Okay, we got. Kayundra, we got L, we got Patrice, we got Anissa, we got XX Brown, NYXX8, we got Vonica, ST, Yolanda, and Jen, Joyce, Barbara, Tanya, Kawinchin, Shirley, and Lakina. I'm so glad you guys are here. Latarsha, welcome, welcome. Our infinitum are for the win. Patricia, Udu, I'm so glad you're here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Once again, um, when I do these lives, it's really for you. I have no agenda. We talk scalp care, hair care. Sometimes we get into some skin care as well. But like I said, we have no agenda. This is for you. I want to know who is going to be the first person to ask me a question. Okay, like what's been going on with your hair? What are some challenges y'all are experiencing? Put your questions below and let's go ahead and get into them. I will probably be on here for about a good hour or so. So yeah, let's get started. Thank you for the rose and thank you for the hearts and the likes too. Dry, oh, dry. Yeah, that's a that's a big one. Um, and I think that kind of co co goes along with the second question, how to moisturize hair in many twists. So when it comes to our hair, I mean, because of how our hair texture is chemically, biologically, you know, our hair is prone to dryness. So when it comes to dry hair, I think the big thing is that we have to make sure that we are having consistent wash days. You know, um, I typically recommend washing your hair at least either once a week or once every other week. You know, so having consistent wash days where you are always using a moisturizing shampoo, ideally, but the 
But the, the kicker here is making sure that you are maintaining your hair in between your wash day. And I think that's where a lot of us get into trouble because we wash our hair and we kind of neglect it until the next time we get it washed again. Or we moisturize it, but we're not doing it as often. So in most cases, um, using a good moisturizer, a good moisturizing shampoo, deep conditioner, investing in a steamer is going to be a game changer. And believe it or not, those few little things can change your hair almost like that. So moisture, moisture, moisture is key, especially if you're experiencing dry hair. Great question, by the way. Um, what do you do with your hair when you are not feeling well? Yeah. So if you're not feeling well, um, it can be tough, you know, when you still have to take care of your body, you know, like you got to shower, you got to brush your teeth. Your hair is also in that category as well. So it will sometimes take a little bit of oomph to get it done, but it's one of those things of making sure that you have at least some energy to take care of your hair. Um, if you can do the minimum, which is making sure that it's moisturized, that would be ideal. As far as styles go, you can keep it in a bun, like very, very low maintenance. I remember when I had COVID last year, it was tough. Like it was so, so tough. I don't think I even got, I don't think I got out the bed for like a good two days. I mean, I, I, I got out the bed, but I wasn't very active, but I try to do as, like, as minimum as I can for my hair. I tried my best not to neglect this. So it will take a little bit of extra oomph. Just to do it, it's going to be a push, but it's going to be worth it. Um, but once the, once again, treat it like how you would every part of your body. Like you're not going to, you're going to try not to go longer than a day, like without brushing your teeth. So treat that as you would your hair as well. Um, Narisa says, why is the crown so different? So a lot of times we will have different hair textures throughout our whole entire head. Like the back of my head, like back here, I have like a very, like a really loose texture where up here it's really a little more tighter. So it's more thicker and it can be a little bit more drier too. So it could be that you just have a different texture around the crown of your head. Um, because of that, I would say make sure that you are giving that section a lot of extra TLC, I should say. So once again, making sure that you are keeping that area moisturized, keep like even adding a little bit of moisturizer, like a little bit of extra moisturizer to the crown of your hair that will help to reduce that dryness. But like I said, a lot of times it's because of our scalp just producing different um, curl patterns and different textures throughout our scalp. And that's completely natural. It's rare to find someone with textured hair that just has one hair type, like 4A all throughout their hair. Typically it's going to be different differences going on here. Okay. So that's pretty much what's going on, but I would just say, make sure that area is as moisturized as possible. So hopefully that helps. That's a really good question too. Um, let's see. Celeste says, is Nutrafol a good hair? I don't know why this peach just wants to do its own thing. Okay, whatever. Is, is Nutrafol a good hair vitamin? Thank you. Yes. So Nutrafol is really good. They have a lot of data, a lot, a lot of data on their vitamins. They actually did their work. Like they did a lot of testing prior to launching that vitamin. Um, and I've seen people have really good results on it. That's typically one of the hair vitamins that I recommend. So if you want to give it a shot, you can. Um, yeah, you can. There are other alternatives out here. Like typically I recommend um, Shadavi hair vitamins, which I believe are currently out of stock. Like her vitamins have been out of stock for a while. Um, another alternative you want to look into is called Pure Encapsulations Hair Skin Nail Vitamins. It's in my Amazon store. The link is below in the description box. But those vitamins are awesome. So I would, I would check those out too. But Nutrafol is good too. Um, beautiful Empress says, is moisturizer spray good to use when the hair is in braids? Absolutely. And that's typically what I recommend. So because your hair is because your hair is in braids, your hair still needs to be hydrated, right? It still needs that moisturization. And a cream is just not gonna do it. A butter is not gonna do it because you're gonna have some crazy buildup and it's not gonna look cute. Okay. So Going for a liquid moisturizer like um, water, aloe vera juice, a liquid leave-in conditioner, for example, will do the job. Um, and just mist your hair, you know, as needed. You can do that every day or once every other day. But a liquid moisturizer would be ideal if you have your hair in braids or even in twists as well. 
Teresa says, you're welcome. When Teresa says, when people are washing their hair in the shower, are they are they to rinse with cool or cold water? Um, cool water is completely fine. I used to think that you have to do it with cold water, but that's just torture. Like I can't, I'm sorry. <laughs> can't. The most I can do is cool water and the cool water is enough to seal the cuticle. So you don't have to like go cold. Like you don't have to do it, but cool is completely fine. And just also keep in mind too, like when you are moist or when you are washing your hair that you don't wash it with like really hot, hot water. Um, that's going to dry your scalp out like crazy. That's going to even irritate your scalp. And it can also lift the cuticles of your hair leading to dry hair. So you want to avoid that completely. But cool water is completely fine. Um, Rosie Del Rey, I like your name. It says, she says, any advice for single stranded knots? I've had them for years now. And anytime I trim them, more come and I want to get rid of them permanently. Hey, Rosie. So great question. So in most cases, cases, in most cases, single strand knots are due to uh, lack of detangling or the styles. So it's either lack of detangling or it can be how you're styling your hair. I don't know how you style your hair, but I know for me, and I say this pretty often, when I used to do wash and goes, which I don't do anymore, um, just personal preference because I, I experienced a lot of single stranded knots when I did wash and goes. So now I just don't do them anymore. Um, but your styles play a role in detangling. So I don't know how often you tingle your hair. You know, do you do it like throughout the week? Do you just do it once a week? Do you do it a few times a month? You know, all of that plays a role too. Um, some cases, dryness too can lead to single stranded knots because if you think about it, like you have like your hair, like your cuticles, right? And a lot of times if they're, if your hair is dry, it's going to rub against the other strands of the hair leading to these knots. So you kind of want to be mindful of that too. So I would say your style, um, moisture, and what was the other one? What was the first one, guys? I forgot the first one. I just woke up from a nap, so my brain is still waking up. What was the first one? Moisture, style, and oh yeah, detangling. That's it. So yeah. Um, let's see. Do you have any advice for alopecia thinning and breakage? Yes. So that's a lot because I don't, because, because you're, okay, Tasha, you have three different things, which are kind of like three different culprits in a sense. So let's try to treat it. Let's try to treat it collectively in a sense, in a sense. So with alopecia, my advice for you is to determine what kind of alopecia it is. Cause it could be androgenic alopecia where it's hormonal, you know, which typically happens in women when they're like in their like late forties, early forties around there, like that menopausal stage. And then you have traction alopecia, which is due to like tight braids and tight styles. So if it's one of those things, number one, I would work on getting your, your hormones balanced. You can go to like your doctor and they should be able to help you with that. Um, you can also look into like, um, alternative medicine to balance out your hormones. And this is for anyone who's going through like menopause or even if you have like heavy periods, you want to look into balancing your hormones. Um, there's two people I love that talk about this on YouTube. There's a lady named Barbara O'Neill. She's amazing. Like if you just type in YouTube, Barbara O'Neill, balancing hormones, you'll see all her videos and she has some great advice. Thank you, Dijanae. Um, Dr. Berg is another person on YouTube. He talks about like natural ways to balance your hormones. So that can help tremendously if it is androgenic alopecia. Okay. That's number one. Number two, um, thank you, Teresa, for the super chat. Um, that's number one. Number two would be if it's traction alopecia, then it could be once again, just, just reducing any tight styles that you've been doing. Cause by reducing tight styles, that's going to reverse it like that. So I do recommend that. The other thing I would say is for the thinning is um, green tea rinses, hands down. Those are my go-to. Like you will always hear me talk about green tea rinses as a thing to do for thinning hair, because if your hair is excessively shedding, green tea will put a stop to that almost instantly. That's number 
three. And then for breakage, it's typically tied to a lack of moisture, like a lot of dryness going on in the hair. So I would look at those three different, those four different avenues to kind of tackle the alopecia, the thinning, and the breakage. Hopefully that helps. Okay, let's see. Um, live, work, clean, wash, and gold is a big culprit for knots. Absolutely. Absolutely. And kudos to the girls who can do wash and goes, but I couldn't do it. I mean, I, I did it for a few. I did it for like my first two years when I was natural. But after that, I said, oh, I can't do it no more. Thank you, Teresa, again. Um, how often should you do clay treatments and do they straighten your hair? Uh, in most, place, most cases, clay treatments don't straighten your hair. Unless you put something in there, you know, that's designed to like break those bonds and like straighten the hair. Um, but in most cases, no. As far as how often, it depends on what you're what you're trying to do. So if you're using like bentonite clay, for example, right, or rasul clay, you can do that like once a month. Like that's completely fine. I don't do them once a month. I may do a clay mask maybe like once every two months. Um, but once again, it depends on what your hair needs. But as far as I know, Clay masks do not straighten your hair. Um, is using a straightening brush bad for your hair? No, it's not, but it depends on the frequency. Like how often are you using it? Are you using it every day? Are you not using a heat protectant? Then it becomes bad, you know? But if you're not, if you're using it like, I don't know, like once, once a week or once every two weeks or you know, you're using a heat protectant, then you are protecting your hair, you know, and more than likely your hair won't become damaged from it unless your hair was like super duper weak, you know? But outside of that, to answer your question, using a straightening hair brush is not bad for your hair. I blow dry my hair like once every two weeks, once a week sometimes, and I haven't lost any curl pattern. I think it just goes down to your technique. It goes down to how, like your, what you're using. Like at any time I use heat on my hair, I don't care if it's a blow dryer, a flat iron, a hooded dryer, well, not, maybe not a hood dryer, because that's indirect heat, but like blow dryer, flat iron, I'm always using heat protectant. So that's, that's why I would highly recommend just to kind of protect your hair and give it like an extra shield so it doesn't experience heat damage. Great question. Um, let's see. Hey, Kayla. Kayla says, why does the crown of your head feel tender? Even without any tension put on it, tenderness still comes about. So, the crown of our head is such, oh, the crown, sorry, not the, the edge, just the crown of our head. So it could be inflammation. It could be like some underlying inflammation going on. Um, and that's what I typically think about when I, when I hear tenderness. Anytime I hear like burning, redness, itchiness, or tenderness, I'm thinking inflammation. So here's what I would do. Number one, I would increase your water intake. And I would also, mm, okay. I'm going to put you like on a little regimen. Okay. If you don't have a pen or paper, get a pen or paper, get a pen or paper. Cause you're going to write this down. Um, three things. Number one for the next, I would say for the next two weeks. Okay. The next two weeks, drink more water. So I don't know what your water intake is right now, but double that. But if you drink no water, then triple that. Okay. So drink more water. Um, that's number one. Uh, number two, I would say for the next two weeks, do scalp massages, especially in that section, that crown section. I prefer doing scalp massages with an oil. If you can get your hands on like, mm, mm, trying to think, you can use a cast like like a castor oil. That, that might be too heavy though. But I, okay, I would do like a sweet almond and a little bit of rosemary, like something like that, like that type of mixture or sweet almond and peppermint, but some, and, and if you have an oil at home, that's fine too. You can use that, but do scalp massages in that area for the next two weeks. Okay. That's number two. Number three, for the next two weeks, I want you to not eat any fried foods, any processed foods, and try to stay away from like soda and like sugary drinks, potato chips, Infl basically foods that cause inflammation. I want you to do that for the next two weeks. Okay. And I'm going to come back here on YouTube because I'm going to do, because uh, next week I'm going to go live on Instagram, but the following week I'm going to be back on here on YouTube. And I want you to tell me your results. Okay. So that's your, your, <laughs> that is your, um, what's the word I'm trying to think? 
my brain is still waking up from this nap. That is your instruction. There's another word I can't think of right now, but that's for you, sis. Who, who wrote that question so I can remember your name? I'm trying to see if I can remember your name. Where did it go? Where did it go? I'm going to find it. I'm going to find your name. So the next time I go live, I'm going to be like, so, oh, here you go. Kayla, Kayla Angela. It's in my brain. It's in my brain. Yes, your assignment. Thank you. <laughs> it's in my brain, Kayla. I'm on. Okay. Got you. I got you, sis. So yes, do those three things for the next two weeks. Okay. And let me know how your scalp, like the crown is. That should completely take away the tenderness. Okay. So hope you wrote those things down. And anyone else can do that. Anyone can do that. Um, because like I said, that water, the massaging and like the low carb diet and reducing inflammation, like in the body, that's going to help tremendously. I'm going to talk more about that too. So stay tuned for that too. Great question. Um, do, 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 do. Can Ozzy Moist, ugh, can Ozzy Moist avocado, avocado, Wait, what's your question sis? Ozzy Moist avocado, a leave-in. Yeah, they have a leave-in and they have a moisturizer too. Uh, what exactly is a wash and go? So, hey, Luana, so a wash and go is like a style where, well, how I understand and how I used to do it was you wash your hair, wash and condition your hair, get out of the shower. You may apply like a light leave-in conditioner. Like you don't want to put anything too, too heavy because the whole point of the wash and go is you want to wear, you want to wear your style, like your curls with them being defined and like all things. So you would take like your favorite gel uh, and just kind of like rake it through your curls. Some people use a diffuser, you know, and you let it do its thing overnight. I always forget how I, how I went to bed with, with the wash and go. It's been that long, but basically the whole point of wash and go is putting gel in your hair and then your curls will be defined, you know? Um, but that's what it is. You can find more about it and see how girls do it on YouTube. But like I said, I had to stop doing it because my hair was like, girl, no, quit it. What's the best heat protectant you use? I like, okay, so for heat protectant, I typically do two, two um, products. I'll use the Affigy Keratin, is it the Keratin spray? It's like the orange spray. I can't think of the name right now, but it's like the Affigy Keratin spray. I'm probably butchering it, but I'm pretty sure it's the Affigy, actually, hold on, let me go online, look it up, because I want to give it the wrong name. I learned a very valuable lesson. Don't do lives after you take a nap, Tanya. Because <laughs> I am fighting for my life over here. Okay, Apogee Keratin and Green Tea Reconstructurizer. That's what it is. So I'll use that as step one. And then I'll use a heat protectant called Silicone Mix. Yes, it has silicones in it, but it is amazing. I mean, yeah hair is so soft and it actually protects it. It's amazing. So that's what I use for heat protectant. Of course, a lot of like um, natural ones out here, like the Pattern Beauty, she has a heat protectant that's natural, no silicones. Uh, who else? Fantasia IC, they have one too. So you have some options, but those two I love. Um... <laughs> Is there anything, okay, is there anything that can break down product buildup that can look like, that looks, wait, that looks like cold grease, holding hair, holding hair together, especially when it's even dent? I don't understand. I'm having a hard time reading your question. Is there anything that can break down product buildup that can look like cold grease, holding hair, together, especially when it's even dent that shed hairs are caught within. Patrice, you may have to rewrite your question, sis. <laughs> I'm not sure what you're saying, but I think I understand the first part about breaking down buildup. So if you're trying to break down buildup, um, the first thing I would say is, well, there's a few things you can do. Um, you definitely want to use a clarifying shampoo. ORS I think it's like Organic Root Stimulator. They have a aloe shampoo, which has been known to be a great clarifying shampoo for like years. You can use that. Um, K18 has a charcoal detox shampoo. That one's probably my favorite because not only is it clarifying, but it also moisturizes my scalp tremendously. So the K18 charcoal detox is really good. 
Um, or you can use apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar with a good shampoo brush will break up any type of product buildup that you have on your scalp. Like you cannot go wrong with that. So I would check those out. I have a few. Um, I think they're also in my um, my Amazon store. Definitely that shampoo brush. And a lot of y'all have been getting that shampoo brush in my Amazon storefront. And it's, it's so good. I just turned my mom onto it last week and she was like, this thing is so good. I'm like, yes, it is. Because it just, it just takes off all the gunk and it just leaves your scalp feeling so good. So yes, hopefully that helps. Um, hi, Tanya. I noticed that when I comb or wash my hair, I see tiny strands or tiny coils fall out. Are these considered shed hair or breakage? Great question. So in most cases, the tiny, like the short piece of hair is going to be breakage for sure. Um, I'm not, I don't know how long your hair is, but the shedded hair will be the length of your hair. So if I was to comb my hair right now, right, and you see like the little bulb at the end, typically, or in most cases, all the time, that length of hair is going to be the same length of my hair because it's shedded hair. Anything shorter than that, like choo, 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 that is breakage for sure. So yes, it's definitely breakage. Um, if, and if it is breakage, which I'm pretty sure it is, you may need to ask yourself when's the last time, well, two things. When's the last time you did a really good deep conditioner? How often are you moisturizing your hair throughout the week? And then also, when's the last time you did a protein treatment? I think sometimes we neglect getting protein treatments. I think we become afraid of protein treatments. Like, I don't get protein overload, but I'm like, your hair is a protein. You know, your hair is keratin. And sometimes, a lot of times, we need to replenish that protein back into our hair. So even if you just do a light protein treatment, it's not going to give you protein overload. You can use Apogee two-minute conditioner once a month, and that's going to be amazing for your hair, you know? Um, so I would try that out. All right, let's see. Um, I had a few questions up above, so let me go up a little bit. Kim says, how to avoid very bad split ends and holes in my hair strands other than to do a big chop and keep a short hair. So, hey, Kim. So I highly recommend getting a trim, um, especially if you're if you're constantly having split ends. My question to you would be how like how like how often do you get trims? You know, um, I know the rule of thumb is like every, what, six to eight weeks. You can stick with that. Um, I try to just, I do search and destroy at least once a week. Excuse me. Okay. I thought I had to sneeze. It didn't come. At least once a week or once every two weeks. And search, search and destroy is when you take like a really good pair of shears and you just kind of go through your hair and look at your ends. If you see like any split ends, you just cut them off yourself. So I would definitely get a trim. If you don't trust yourself, then, you know, get a professional to do it. The other thing I would say that causes split ends is going to be dry hair for sure, hands down, because your hair is breaking off. And with the hair that's, that's just, that's just broken off, it's kind of left in a weak state, meaning it, 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 it loses layers of protein, that cuticle that surrounds the cortex of the hair leading to split ends. So it could be a lack of moisture. It can also be how you're combing your hair and how you're brushing your hair. You know, um, sometimes using old brushes that we that we've had for like years can also lead to split ends and breakage in our hair, you know. Um, so it could be a number of things. I think personally, I think it could be a lack of moisture. And then, like I said, just getting not getting trims. So I would just look at those culprits and see if that helps. Um, but definitely get a, tr get a trim as soon as possible. And like I said, if you don't trust anyone to touch your hair, because I get it, because I've had a bad experience as well. Not saying that you have, but I have. Um, you can look online on how to do search and destroy technique, search and destroy method to learn how to do it yourself. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. I found out that I was using clarifying shampoo too much. This helped to understand why my hair is dry. Oh, yeah. Clarifying shampoo ain't no joke. That's for sure. Um, it has to be a balance. Like, I don't recommend clarifying your hair like once a week. I think I spoke to someone who said they clarify their, their hair once a week. And I was like, uh-uh, 
cut it out because she was having some really dry hair, dry scalp. And I think she had some breakage too. But clarifying shampoos are no joke. But doing it like once a month, once every other month or as needed will be just fine. Um, Khadija says... I didn't get a hair wait, I didn't I didn't get a hair trim for several years. I trim my split ends now, but I never have defined curls. I'm thinking it's from the damage that accumulated from not getting trims. What to do? Hey Khadija, so if you're if you you are ready, okay, so you're you you trim your ends, but your ends are still not defined. So it could be it could be from damage. But if you're getting trims, then you should be cutting off that damage. So in a sense, you should be your hair should be reset. So what I would do is this. I would do a protein treatment. If you're doing all the things moisture-wise, I would get a good protein treatment. Now, since you said damage, I low-key want to say get your hands on the Apogee two-step. Because you have the two-minute, which is a light protein, and you have the two-step, which is a little bit more heavier, right? So if you want to explore the Apogee two-step, that can help to kind of bring your curls back to life, especially towards the ends. Um, I would try that. I would definitely try that because it could be it could be a lack of protein that's going on where it's just not allowing your curls to be defined towards the ends of your hair. So I would try that. I would try that. And keep me posted. Let me know because I'm curious as to like what if that does help you, um, but definitely let me know and keep me posted. Hopefully that helps. Um, hi, Tanya. I've had traction alopecia for years now. Okay. I have not had extensions for like four to five years now, but I haven't seen any improvement. Do you have any recommendations for me? So you've had it. So you haven't had extensions for four to five years, but you haven't seen any improvement. So it could be and I, I would recommend you going to a trichologist to confirm this, but it could be that the hair itself, like the follicle is damaged to the point that it could be dead. But once again, I would get that confirmed by a trichologist who, who can confirm that for you. It could be that, or it could be, um, hmm, what else could it be? If it's not that, I would also still look at your styles that you're doing. If you're not getting extensions, that's cool. But traction alopecia can still be prevalent if you're doing like tight ponytails or anything pulling at the edges. So it could be that too. Um, my other question for you would be, are you taking a hair vitamin right now? Like what, like what are you doing internally to help your scalp to, you know, to, to help your scalp internally to help support hair growth in that area, you know? Um, are you taking a good hair vitamin? I mentioned earlier that um, uh, Shadavi hair vitamins are really good, S-H-E-D-A-V-I. However, they are <laughs> sold out right now, but the, cure, the Pure Encapsulations Hair Skin Nail in my Amazon store, those are really good. So I would get on a really good hair vitamin. I would do scalp massages, tonight. Like I would start doing scalp massages tonight. So I would do that for the next four weeks. I would get on a good hair vitamin for the next four weeks. I would do scalp massages every day, every day, every day, like make it like a nighttime self self-care routine every day for the next four weeks. I would use, if you're okay with this, because some people like feel kind of about castor oil because it's kind of heavy. I would get a little bit of castor oil and I would put a few drops of peppermint in there and a few drops of rosemary. Like I would do that combination only because you haven't seen any improvement in the past four to five years. And I would take that mixture and just lightly apply it to like the balls of your fingers and just massage it onto that area for at least a good five. I would say I would say three, five minutes for the next four weeks. So hair vitamin. Mani low manipulation styles, no, no styles pulling at your edges for the next four weeks and massaging for the next four weeks. And that should help. That should help. If you still, if you still see no improvement after four weeks, I would definitely try to go see a dermatologist or a trichologist so they can get a deeper look and see what's going on. I hope that helps. Um, let's see. Hold on. Barbara says, I have a puff ball in the middle of my hair. 
How can I get rid of it? My hair is shoulder blade length. When you say a puff ball, what do you mean? A puff ball, like a puff ball of hair or like a bump of like a skin? Like, like what's, what's going on? You might have to give me some more information. Um, Jan says, my hair is high porosity and I always see breakage no matter how much I moisturize. Is it okay to use Olaplex three top three, three every, wait, oh, oh, Olaplex three every other week. Um, yes. I know some people who use Olaplex, um, once a week, actually. So you using that once every other week, that's, that's completely fine. And Jan, if you are still seeing breakage, even after moisturizing your hair, then it could be the protein that you're missing. So I would try that for sure. And like the Olaplex three, that's a great formula. And doing that once, Every other week, that's gentle enough for your hair. So I would try that definitely and keep me posted. Um, let's see. Hey, Tanya, thank you for your contribution to the natural hair movement. You're welcome. My question is about hair gel. Can you give some detailed info on why, when, and how to use it? What is the purpose of gel? Great question. So hair gel really is a, a styling agent. So when you think about like hair care products, right? It's really either maintenance or style. Shampoo, conditioner, leave-in, moisturizer, all of that is gonna be your maintenance. Gel, edge control, styling creams, um, what else, hair mousse, all of that is styling. So, so when you think about your hair gel, think of it as a styling aid in a sense. Now, as far as why you use it, because maybe you want your curls to be more defined. Maybe you want your edges to be laid. That's why. Um, when, when, when you want to style your hair, like if I wanted to do a sleek bun, you know, like, you know what? I'm tired of my hair being out. I want to do a sleek bun. I'm going to do a sleek bun and I'm going to get some good hair gel to sleek my hair down. So that's the when, whenever you want a sleek style. Um, how to use it. I prefer gel on wet hair or damp hair. Um, personally, I find that when I put it on like dry, dry hair, like it just doesn't perform the way it's supposed to. Like if I was to put gel on my hair right now with my hair dry, it just wouldn't be as sleek. But I prefer, you know, it on like wet hair. And I feel like it lasts longer too, like when you like the hold lasts longer when you put it on wet hair. Um, one thing I used to do when I used to wear like a lot of sleek buns, um, and you can try this too, uh, put, do, okay, uh, do your bun in the shower. Like when you're done conditioning your hair, wrench out, wrench, wrench out, <laughs> wrench out the excess water, right? And then, um, because you don't want to be like soaking wet, you know, and then get yourself a good brush in the shower or just you can use your fingers, whatever you want to use, and just, you know, sleek your hair back and get the gel all while you're in the shower and go, and you can do your, your bun that way. And I find I get the best buns when I do it in the shower. I don't know what it is. Maybe because it's a steam, who knows, but that's how you can do it. And there's so many different ways to do it. You can get out the shower too, but that's one way you can, um, you can do it. And like I said, the whole purpose is to, is to sleek the hair down. People use it for wash and goes, you know, to define your curls and whatnot. So yeah, it's definitely a styling product. Like I said, not really for maintenance. It's just more so for styling. Great question. Um, let's see. Um, uh, da, da, da. Rosie Del Rey says, do you offer personalized hair coaching? I do. I do. I actually just had two calls yesterday. Um, but yes, I do offer hair care coaching. April is full. So my April calendar is completely booked. However, May is open. So if you want to connect with me one-on-one, -on -one, um, and I love it because I get to see you face to face, I get to see your hair, I get to see your scalp and really give you some great customized advice, including product recommendations. And you get a nine page plan, really just designed for you and what you are experiencing. And it's designed to give you solutions quicker. And I'm finding that doing these calls is helping you guys get to your hair goals a lot faster. 
because you don't have to figure out, does this work? Does this work? Oh, this doesn't work. This doesn't work. Does this work? It's like, I'm, I'm giving you so much time back because <laughs> you're getting to your goals a lot faster. So yes, Rosie, absolutely. I do hair care coaching. Um, and you can find more information about that below in the description box. Um, is it true that coconut oil sits on the hair and is very difficult to come off? No, that is false. Um, I prefer coconut oil as a pre-poo. Some people use it on their scalp. I love it as a pre-poo and it comes right off in the shower. So yeah, it's not hard to come off the hair at all. Um, what else can I use with the Kuza moisturizer to moisturize my hair? Outside of the Kuza black castor oil moisturizer, I would get your hands on a good sealant. You can use hair grease. I actually used hair grease last night. This is a product of moisturizer and hair grease. Um, but yeah, you can use hair grease. You can use a carrier oil like sweet almond, olive. I love olive oil. You can use olive oil. Um, but that's how I would do that combination. Because once again, moisturizing our hair is a two-step process. Moisturize and oil in that in that order. So yeah. Um, let's see. Is it possible after correcting illness, can you get thick hair back? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I love this question. Um, so after correcting an illness, uh, you can absolutely get your hair back, in my opinion. And the reason why I say that is because I believe that the body, I believe that, I believe that when God made our bodies, he made it in such a way where it's designed to heal itself. That's just my opinion. I truly believe that, you know? So Yes, absolutely. Now, of course, there's going to be some changes on our parts for sure. You know, our diet, exercising, you know, um, what we do, what we consume, that plays a role too. But absolutely, you can get thicker hair and grow your hair back even after illness for sure. Great question. Um, Keandra says, I stand behind Aphigee. I love it. Aphigee is the goat. I'm trying to tell you. Aphigee. I love Apogee. Apogee, send me a check, okay? Because I be talking about y'all all the time, but Apogee is amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. All right, let's see. Um, okay, Miss LGC. Hi. Hey, girl. How, could you speak to how to, wait, could you speak to how to help with shedding that's leading to bald spots? Yes. So um, if your hair, if so, if you're experiencing excessive shedding, because you guys know our hair is going to shed regardless, excessive shedding leading to bald spots. Um, it could, mm, it could be alopecia. It could be, it could be. Um, and alopecia is also low key tied to inflammation in the body. So that could be a thing. It could be alopecia, you know, but once again, you can always go to a trichologist, a dermatologist to confirm that, but it could be alopecia because in most cases, shedding, excessive shedding, well, it could, it could lead to bald spots. Let me not say that. So yes, but it could be alopecia. Um, in regards to how to help with it, If it is alopecia, and I'm just kind of, I'm going down this rabbit hole, so bear with me, sis, okay? If it is alopecia, then you really want to get to the root of it. And like I said, I believe the root of alopecia is inflammation in the body. Um, it can also be hormonal. It can also be a, like a hormonal imbalance in the body too, you know? So if it is those things then you want to start looking into, I feel like this is a healthy, I feel like this is the theme of tonight's live. Okay. So, hey, it is what it is. We're, we're going to go with the flow. If it is that, because like I said, the root would be inflammation. You want to consider an anti-inflammatory diet. So your leafy greens, your fruits, your veggies, your water, cutting out fried food, cutting out processed food, cutting out sugar, really going low carb, you know what I'm saying? Anti-inflammatory, because that would be the root because you want to get it at the root. You don't want to, you don't want to treat the symptoms. You want to get it at the root. Okay. So that's, that's, if it is alopecia, it may not be, it may not be, but if it is, that's how I would tackle it. Okay. 
Um, other things you can do at home is you can do green tea rinses to see if that helps to reduce the shedding because green tea contains these amazing organic compounds called catechins, and they are known for strengthening the follicle of the hair, helping to reduce excessive shedding. Um, so I would try that too to see if that helps. So I would try those two things. Um, yeah. If it's alopecia, I would go that route. But either way, I would definitely try the green tea rinse for sure. Great question. I almost went down a rabbit hole, but I didn't go. I almost went. Okay, let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Would, would getting locks on thin hair help growth at the scalp? Massive, okay, let me read this again. Would getting locks on thin hair help growth at the scalp? <sighs> mm. To be honest with you, I'm not a huge fan of locks on thin hair. I'm just not. I'm just not. And the reason why I'm not, now, of course, you, you, you're going to do whatever you want to do. But <laughs> at the end of the day, it pulls. You have gravity, right, that, that's going to eventually pull at your, you know, and you have all that shed it hair because to my understanding of locks is that the length is really coming from the fact that 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 shedded hair is just being locked into the locked like it's just shedded hair so it gets weighty and it can pull at your scalp and I've seen so many women with locks they look beautiful but they but their but their hair is thinning like crazy because of the locks or they have no edges because of the locks or they're thinning so much, especially at their crown. So to answer your question, says I don't recommend getting locked, and you already have thin hair. You already have thin hair, so I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend getting locks. I wouldn't, because I don't think it's going to help with the growth at the scalp. Honestly, now once again, you can do it and try and see what happens. Because at the end of the day, you know you you have to do what you have to do what works for you and what you want to do. Um, but I'm not a big fan of locks on thin hair. I think it can lead to um, hair loss, in my opinion. So, but hopefully that helps. Um, I thought about locks, but from my research over time, the weight is not so good on the follicle. It's not, it's not. That's, it's not. Um, Vonica says, how do you incorporate tea rinses before or after washing and conditioning? I like to do tea rinses after shampooing. So after you wash your hair, green tea rinse, rosemary tea rinse, whatever, what else? rice tea rinse, whatever tea you want to use, um, rinse it off and then condition. So that's how I would do that. Great question. Sulet says, does vegetable charcoal shampoo, I've never heard that before, huh. vegetable charcoal shampoo help with dandruff or is it better, or it's better another one that has green tea and aloe vera? Um, 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 um. I'm leaning more towards the green tea and the aloe vera for dandruff. Even better if you can add a few drops of tea tree in that shampoo. We're not, we're not into the bottle of the shampoo, but in a separate bowl, add a few drops of tea tree with that green tea aloe vera shampoo that you're talking about. I think that's going to be amazing for treating dandruff like tremendously. And I, it was so funny. I was, it was in one of my, my coaching calls from yesterday. I literally just said this, how I think the best ingredients for the, for the scalp, especially when it comes to dandruff, um, and even seborrheic dermatitis and psoriasis, any type of scalp condition, in my opinion, the top two is going to be aloe vera and tea tree. Those would be like the top two. So I would go for the green tea and aloe vera and add a few drops of tea tree. Um, oh, that's a good question. Yaz Little Flock says, why does hair appear to get thicker during pregnancy? How can thickness be maintained after delivery? Great question. So your hair appears thicker during pregnancy because your estrogen 
your hormone, your estrogens are higher. So because your estrogen is higher, you know, you got the hormones fluctuating and your estrogen is higher when you're pregnant, your hair is thriving. It's thicker, it's longer, it's shinier, you know, all the things because that estrogen is up. But then you got postpartum shedding, right? And that's pretty much when the estrogen is starting to get back down to its normal level. And with it decreasing comes the shedding of all that beautiful hair, you know? So how to maintain it? How would I maintain it? Oh, gosh. So what I would do is, and I have to look into this, but I would definitely do green tea rinses. I'm not sure if pregnant women can do green tea rinses. I'm, I'm pretty sure you, well, I don't know. I would check with your, with, your, with your doctor just to make sure. But if you can do it, I would take, I would start doing green tea rinses at least once a week. Like after the baby is here, you know, and you've done delivered, I would start doing green tea rinses probably for the next two months to try to maintain that thickness and maintain that length because that green tea rinse could help reduce that postpartum shedding. That's what I would do, hands down, hands down. So I would do that. I would do that. But that's why your hair grows so much during pregnancy because your estrogen levels um, are increased. Okay, let's see. Um, you're welcome. Mm. Oh, shoot. I lost my place. Hold on a second. <laughs> Okay, so Dejana says, hi, Tanya, my hair is always dry, even after deep conditioning with no heat, okay, and using a leave-in, I don't know what to do. Any suggestions? So if you're, so if you're, okay, so if you're deep conditioning and you're leave-in and your hair is so dry, it could be the products that you're using. It could be that your hair is just not compatible with those products. Or it could be your hair is not getting enough moisture. So you've mentioned that you deep condition, but you don't use heat. Adding a little bit of heat will help for that product to penetrate deeper into the cuticle so your hair can be more moisturized and more hydrated and conditioned with that deep conditioner. So you adding heat may help. Um, also, what do you do in between your wash days? You know, like, are you moisturizing your hair, you know, four times a week? Because that's what I do. I wash my hair. Okay. Are you moisturizing your hair three to four times a week? Like what's going on in between your wash day? Are you drinking water? Because when you drink more water, that also helps to moisturize your hair internally. So I would try those things. I would get your hands, if, if, even better, if you can get your hands on like a steamer, like a good hair steamer for when you deep condition your hair, that's going to help to take your wash day to the next level. Um, I do have a few I recommend in my Amazon store to check out. So the link is in my bio, but I would definitely do that. Increase your moisture sessions in between your wash days and increase your water intake. And that should help. Which hazel for hair has helped me? Have you ever tried that regimen? What do you think? Oh, yes. Witch hazel is amazing. Witch hazel is amazing. I typically recommend witch hazel for those who like work out a lot and have like don't want to like wash your hair every day when they when they go work out. Uh, because that witch hazel is going to help to remove that excess um, oil and that sweat from off the scalp. Um, witch hazel is great for a dry scalp. Like if you have a dry scalp, using witch hazel will help to hydrate that scalp. It's amazing. It is amazing for the scalp. So I love it. Um, and the one I, I, I love is the Thayer's, T-H-A-Y-E-R-S, Rosewater Witch Hazel. So, so good. And I think that's also in my Amazon store too. The link is in my bio my bio in the description box. Um, how often can you use ACV in your conditioner once a week? That's completely fine. I would just use a little bit because you don't need like a, a ton of it, but you can just add a little bit to your conditioner. Um, that's like a nice little tip, a little secret. I did a video on that a while ago. Um, I haven't talked about it recently, but for anyone on here, all 137 of you, if you want to try something really cool this weekend, if it's your wash day weekend, add a little bit of ACV, like diluted ACV to your conditioner like to your conditioner and put it on your hair and your curls 
are going to be so, so defined. The softness, the, the tingling, it's going to be amazing. Like just, 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 just tell you now. Okay. But that's like a little hack that I think you guys should, should try. So check that out. But yes, once a week is fine. Completely fine. Um, Um, what are your thoughts on DMDM High Dantuin? Um, I have a whole video on it. I think DMDM High Dantuin is completely fine. Um, it's been used in the cosmetic industry forever, and I think it's a great ingredient. But you want to learn more about it, you can check out my video. Um, if you type in curly chemistry DMDM high dantuin, you'll see all, all the things. You'll see that video. Is it good to use hairspray instead of gel for a ponytail ponytail style? I prefer, I'm assuming you mean like, like the like the hairspray that makes the hair kind of hard. Um, if that's what you're referring to, I don't recommend that. I, I would say use some gel, use some good, good hydrating gel. I love the um, Aunt Jackie's Curl Elongating Gel. So good. No flaking, no none of that. It's so, so good. Mm. Let's see. My daughter has low porosity, super thick, 4C hair. Okay. What what detangling shampoo conditioner do you recommend? Um, a good detangling shampoo. I, I love the As I Am Long and Lux shampoo. I would say try that one, Donna. And then also for conditioner, I would say use the... Mm, Use the, the Shea Moisture Manuka Honey Mask. It's a it's a conditioner, but it's also like a deep conditioner. It's more so a hair mask, but it's you, know, you can use it as a conditioner. Um, that combination would be really nice. But I would I would check that out. And because her hair is four C and it's super thick, I would add a tablespoon of olive oil to the conditioner. Um, don't add it into the jar because that'll, that's gonna mess up the preservative system in that formula, but just take some out into like a little plastic bowl and that, and then add a tablespoon of olive oil and to that bowl, mix it up and then apply that to her hair. Um, and I would leave that on her hair for about a good 10, 15 minutes. And that's gonna be amazing. And if you can detangle her hair with that conditioner, cause that olive oil in there is gonna help to increase the slip in that conditioner. So you should be able to easily detangle her hair and that's going to help tremendously with the slip and just getting that formula directly throughout her hair to help with the moisture on her wash day. I would also use, Miss Donna, <laughs> the uh, Tangle Teaser Y2 Comb. That is amazing. So do that trio. The As I Am Long and Luxe Shampoo, Shea Moisture, Shea Moisture, <laughs> Shea Moisture, Manuka Honey Hair Mask and the Tangle Teaser Y2 Comb. Those, amazing. I hope that helps. You're welcome. Okay, I gotta check the time. 8.06, let's do, let's go until 8, ooh, maybe 8.15 and then we'll hop off. Um, hey, Brenda. Brenda says, I've been following you for years and have learned a lot of info. Plus, shame of Oh, yay. Thank you, Brenda. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're learning a ton from curly chemistry. So thank you. I love pregnancy hair, but I hate the shedding. Mm. Um, let's see. Mother Jazz says, I believe I have CCCA waiting on dermatologist appointment. What can I do in the meantime? Um, in the meantime, I would just nurture your hair. I would do some scalp massages. I would even do some good green tea rinses to strengthen the follicles of your hair. Uh, if you can also cut down on the sugars and the fried foods and any type of processed food that you're that you may be consuming in your diet, I would cut down on that, especially the soda and sugar and juice, just in case you do, because you may not. I don't know. But I'm just saying, if that is a part of your diet, I would just just not do that. Um, because once again, alopecia, the, the root of alopecia is inflammation, you know. So yeah, that's what I would do in the meantime before your dermatologist appointment. Um, you're welcome. I hot oil my hair with the ACV rinse work well with the hot oil. 
Um, yes. So it depends on when you do the hot oil treatment. So there's some people who do hot oil treatments before they shampoo. And then there's some who do it like directly after they, um, condition their hair, like as a final treatment. So if you're doing the ACV, let's say after you shampoo your hair, or if you're doing the ACV with your conditioner, you're going to rinse that off, right? It's completely rinsed off. And then you're going to do your hot oil treatment. So it's not going to interfere in any way. You're welcome. Um, okay, let's see. How to make your how to make your hair look and feel softer. Your hair looks so soft, and I'm experiencing my hair looking and feeling coarse. Um, thank you, thank you so much. So honestly, what contributes the most to my hair and the softness that you guys see is just the fact that I am very consistent. And with moisturizing my hair, like when I tell you I moisturize my hair every two days, I stick with that. I stick with it. I stick with it. I just don't skip it because I know what my hair used to look like and feel like and what it used to do when I would skip my moisturizing sessions. And I'm like, OK, I'm done. I'm done with the breakage. I'm done with it looking dull and crazy. So it's just the moisture. I just I just. I just moisturize my hair. I just be consistent with it. I be consistent with my wash days, you know, um, I'm doing better at drinking more water now because before I used, I didn't, I used to drink a lot of juice, a lot of soda. Now I drink a lot of water, a lot of sparkling water. I love sparkling water, like without the sugar, of course. Um, I think that helps a lot. I take biotin, I take, um, hair vitamins, you know, like I just be consistent. And I think that's what it is. I think the consistency is a thing. Um, now unless it's something underlying, then that's different. Like if I had like a, like a, if there was like an internal issue, then that's different. But for me, it's like just being consistent. I think that helps me a lot. And that's why I always say like hair, healthy hair, softer hair is available to all of us. Healthy hair, softer hair does not discriminate. As long as we do our part, it's going to show up, you know? So, but I hope that helps us. And I would also look at the moisture cycle video. I think that was the game changer for me when I discovered moisture cycling. Like it's a cycle. So to the person who asked me that question, I think I lost you again. But go to that video, XX Brown, XX8. Go to Curly Chemistry Moisture Cycle. I break all of that down. And it has been a game changer for me. So hopefully that helps. You're welcome. Um... Mm -hmm. What to recommend if you're using anti wait, what to recommend if using an anti-dandruff shampoo and rinse and nothing is improving. Okay. Der the dermatologist said that it's the cerebrohaic dermatitis. It's been years. I don't know how to relieve my scalp. So you have cerebrohaic dermatitis. Um, which is also tied to inflammation as well. So of course, I'm, you know, I'm gonna say. Okay. Change your diet, change what you drink, what you eat. That's going to help tremendously, especially if you've been dealing with this for years and you have to change your diet. You have to, um, that's going to be a game changer. I, once again, I mentioned these two people earlier in this live, whenever you guys get a chance, especially if you're interested in going this route of an anti-inflammatory diet, look up Barbara O'Neill, Barbara O'Neill here on YouTube and Dr. Berg. Um, but I love Barbara O'Neill. Check her out first. Okay. Check Barbara O'Neill out first, but she talks more about this. Um, Cause I really think that is the underlying cause of what you are experiencing. So I would do that. Um, as far as like a shampoo goes, um, I do like the Atlanta hair doctor shampoo. I would check out her, her shampoo and conditioner. Um, I would even get some fresh aloe, like go to the store, get some fresh aloe, cut it open. Um, Avoid the little yellow part because that part is toxic, but focus on like the gel, like that clear gel. And I would just rub that on your scalp, like just li really like rub that on your scalp. I would do that like once a week, like whenever your wash day is, I'm assuming maybe it's once a week or, you know, if not, try to increase it to once a week where you're using that aloe, that fresh organic aloe on your scalp. That's going to help tremendously. Whatever shampoo you're using, whether it's the one that the dermatologist gave you or if you want to use Atlanta Hair Doctors, I would also add a few drops of tea tree oil to that 
that's going to help tremendously. And that's just like some holistic stuff you can do at home to help treat the cervicaric dermatitis. But like I said, the big underlying culprit here is the inflammation. And that's going to help tremendously by you changing your diet. Great question. All right. Um, does activated charcoal shampoo and conditioner help with dandruff? Um, I'm trying to think. I personally haven't seen charcoal as a thing for treating dandruff. I know charcoal helps with detoxing the scalp and removing toxins off, like, out, like out of the skin and the scalp. But as far as like dandruff goes, I haven't seen too much about that. I mean, it could, but I just I haven't seen much about charcoal helping to relieve dandruff. Um, but yeah, maybe it does. I just haven't seen it. Um, how do you moisturize your hair four times a week without getting rid of all of your definition? My hair puffs up and goes back home. <laughs> I love that. So when I moisturize my hair, I'm also styling it at the same time. So tonight, wait, am I moisturizing my hair tonight? No, I did it last night. So I'm probably just going to put it in a twist tonight, but tomorrow when I moisturize my hair, I'm going to put it in two braids or I may even do twists. So when I wake up the next morning, if I choose to take my hair down, I have a style. I have curls. I have, you know, so that's what I would do. Um, and this goes for when I blow dry my hair, like how I have it now, or when it's not blow dried. I'm always styling my hair when I moisturize my hair. So, I, so, excuse me, I never just moisturize my hair and do nothing else with my hair. It's always going to be in a braid, like braid it up in some form or fashion, a braid out two braids going down or twist out to help to maintain my curl. And so I have a style the very next morning. So that's what I do to help maintain it. Great question. Um, what help? What helps chronic dry scalp? No matter what I do, my scalp is always dry. Um, I would get, I would also do the aloe, but if you're like, I don't want to do aloe, you just kind of want something to buy. <laughs> I would use the, um, what's it called? The Pacifica Rosemary Mint Scalp Serum super hydrating, or you can use Pattern Beauty Scalp Serum. Those two formulas are amazing for dry scalp. Uh, the Pattern Beauty one, I think it has peppermint in it, so it does have like some stimulating properties, but the Pacifica has rosemary in it, which is also good for hair growth. So those two, you can't go wrong. I, I want to say the Pacifica Rosemary Mint is in my Amazon store, so you can find it there too. Great question. And you can put that on your scalp every day as needed. Whenever your scalp was kind of itchy or flaky or dry, you can just put it on and just massage it and you don't have to rinse it off at all. What's a good liquid, liquid leave-in conditioner? Um, I love Apogee Pro Vitamin Leave-In Conditioner. That one's a really, really good one. Um, I think Cream of, Cream of Nature has one too on their... Um, I think it's their argan oil line. That's really, actually, yeah, I forgot about that one. That one's, ooh, that one's good. I'm gonna have to go pick that one up. But it's like a milky texture. It's like Cream of Nature Argan Oil. I think it's their argan oil line. It's like in that red and yellow bottle, but it's like a milky texture and it's yellow, but it's so hydrating. So that was that's a good one too. So between that one and the Apogee, you can't go wrong. You're welcome. ACV conditioner and olive oil is my go-to. I'm trying to tell them. I'm trying to tell them, Lanaya. I'm trying to tell them. <sighs> Takes your washi to the very next level. It's so good. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. Barbara O'Neill and add tea tree to the shampoo. Rub aloe on weekly wash. They will do. Thank you. You're yes. You're welcome. Um, I also do ACV rinses if that helps or don't bother. Um, ACV. Wait, I'm trying to remember your original question, but yes, ACV is completely fine in your in your regimen because as long as you guys dilute the ACV, it's going to be gentle enough on your scalp. You know, just don't put it directly, you know, out the bottle onto your scalp. All right, what time is it? Oh, it's eight seventeen. Time goes by so fast. You're having fun. Okay, um, how do you make your hair so different from time to time? How do you mean? How, how to make it different? What do you mean? Cause my, my style is so like, I have the most, when I tell you I'm so lazy, like I become a lazy natural. I think I've earned it. I think I've earned being a lazy natural. But when I say lazy, I don't mean like, I don't do nothing to my hair. Like I take care of my hair, but style wise, I'm just very low maintenance. So 
how I make my hair look so different from time to time, Gillian, what I do is I might wear a wig. <laughs> I might wear a headband wig. I might wear um, two braids and unravel them like I did here. Um, I might put a bun in my hair. You know, I may do a braid out. That's it. I just keep it simple. But the past few, few lives I have worn like my little headband wigs that I love to wear because they're low maintenance. Um, and they're great protective styles, but for the most part, I just keep it simple. I just keep it simple. And you just got to find what works for you too. You know, I feel like in this natural hair care journey, you, you just learn what your hair likes and what it needs. You know, you learn like, you know what? Uh, I don't want to do that. I want to do this, you know? Cause like I said, I used to, I used to do wash and goes a lot. My first two, two, three years, when I first went natural, you know, and that was cool for that season, but it's not for this season that I'm in. And I'm okay with that, you know? So you just got to find what works for you. And of course, with YouTube, you have so many videos to look for styles and just find one that suits you and that makes you feel good. Um, Some good oils to buy. Uh, for protecting oils like sealants, I love olive oil. I love sweet almond oil. I love avocado oil. For pre-poo, I love babasu oil. I love coconut oil. Just to name a few. All right, I'm gonna go because I'm gonna keep going if I don't stop. And I have to, um, I need to take it down because it's been a very long day. Um, please end this debate of heat versus no heat. Does heat damage your hair? Is this, is, is it really a debate going on? Am I out the loop? Do I be out the loop? Like, what are some debates going on? Side note, like, let's just switch gears real quick. You know, since we're like winding down, we can like wind down together. Uh, what are some debates going on in the natural hair care industry? Because clearly, maybe I just be in my own curly chemistry bubble. <laughs> I don't know. Like what's been going on? But to answer your question, um, does heat damage your hair? Yeah, it can. It can. But so can water. <laughs> you know, it's all about how you use it. You know, it's all about how you use it. I use heat on my hair. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest with y'all, okay? Now, the real time you about to come out because I'm getting sleepy. I'm going to be honest. I blow dry my hair like once a week. But I don't lose my curl pattern. I can wet my hair right now. And you will see my curls. Why? Because, number one, the apparatus that I use, which is the Revere, you know, it's designed to blow dry your hair without causing heat damage. But I also always use a heat protectant, number one. And then number two, I do protein treatment. So my hair is strong. So even when I do use heat, whether that's a flat iron or a blow dryer, my hair is not damaged because I'm doing all the maintenance and the, and, and the preventative methods so that when I do use heat, my hair is strong enough for that heat. So can too much heat cause damage? Of course. <coughs> Excuse me. Absolutely. I had heat damage back in 2015. I'll never forget it. You can go back on my video and, and see, see the catastrophe. But yeah. But as far as like, you know, oh, you should never use heat. It's horrible for your hair. It's, it should be banned. No, it's just about how you use it. You know, that's that's what it comes down to. No oil or butter. Yeah, that's been a, that's been a, a debate for a long time. I did a um a video on that too. On that on the whole no oil, no butter, and um, it's so funny though because a lot of women. And men too, who did that, who like was like, no oil, no butter at that time. They're now coming back and they're like, my hair is breaking off. My hair is damaged. My hair is so dry. My hair used to be down in my bra strap. Now it's at my neck. Like my hair has broke off, broke off so much. You know, like they're coming back now. They're like, don't do it. So that's why y'all got to be careful about these bandwagons. I'm telling you, be, be careful because they going to pop up. They going to pop up. And I, I kid you not, every six, it's probably either once a year or every six months, 
there's always some new bandwagon, some new something that pops up. And I just be sitting back watching like, mm, let's see how this one going to play out, you know? But yeah, that oil butter, that that whole debacle, that was a that was a thing. But yeah. You're welcome, Monica. Natural hair, natural and straight natural. Yeah, that's it. That, that's I don't know why that's a debate. I mean, when it comes down to being a straight natural, that's just personal preference. You know, there are some girls who be out here straighten their hair and they be natural and their hair is healthy and beautiful. As long as you can care for your hair and give it what it needs, you can absolutely rock a straight natural. Now, would I ever be a straight natural? Probably not because I just can't keep up with, with the amount of heat to make to be a straight natural. Um, and I just love my thickness. I just love how my natural hair is, you know? So for me being a bone straight natural, no, but it doesn't take from the from the person who wants to be a straight natural, you know, that's just, that's just their personal preference. Um, so yeah. All right. Simplicity is key. I love that C3. Simplicity is key. It really is. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Thank you, Tanya, for another informative natural hair session. I learned so much. Yay. You're welcome in Patterson. You are welcome. All right, I'm about to head out. Let me, um, okay, let me answer these, these last three questions from Mia, Lawana, and Bronze Lala, and then we're gonna head out. These last three, I can't even count, these last three. Um, how do you recommend, how do you recommend we moisturize our hair after blow drying? I use a blow dryer to stretch and stop my hair, but I have trouble keeping it moisturized throughout the week. Um, how do you, how do I recommend you moisturize your hair after blow drying? The same way you would moisturize your hair when it's not blow dry. Do your hair in like in sections, get you a water-based cream. Like I, I use a cream. I wouldn't, you could use a liquid, but I would just go for the cream, a cream-based moisturizer and just moisturize your hair and twist it up. But and the, the, the magic about it is that it's not going to take away from your blowout when you use a cream-based moisturizer an oil and you twist it up. When you do it in those three in that in that order, your hair is still going to be in its blowout state. Like I washed my hair on Tuesday. And since Tuesday, wait, nah, nah, wait, I can't count. Tuesday, Thursday. Okay, I moisturized my hair one time because I moisturized it on Thursday, yesterday. And my hair is still in this blown out state, even after applying a water-based moisturizer. So you just moisturize it, but make sure you put the oil on and you twist it up. And that's going to help to maintain the style. Okay. Where is the other person at? Luana. Um, what are some good butters for very dry, high porosity hair? I love Kappa Asu butter. Kappa Asu butter. I forget how to spell it, but it's like C-A-P, wait, Kappa. Kappa, C A P A U C A. I'm probably butchering it, but Kappa Asu butter is amazing. I love mango butter and shea butter. Those are my top three butters Kappa Asu, mango, and shea. Those are so good, especially if you have dry, high porosity hair. You can use that as your sealant as your step two. All right. And then the last person was Bronze Salawa. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. Why do I still have flakes in my hair, even though I wash my hair often? excuse me, you may need to get a scalp exfoliating brush when you shampoo your hair because sometimes, I mean, the shampoo is amazing, but sometimes depending on how long the product buildup has been on your scalp, your oil, the sweat binds the dead skin cells in the dirt together. And it makes it really difficult for it to break off and go down the drain. But when you use a exfoliating brush, like a shampoo brush, it helps to remove the bonds so that it can go down the drain. So I would highly recommend that. You can use the Pacifica exfoliating shampoo brush. It's my favorite. It's in my Amazon store. The link is below. I think it's like $9, but it's so good. It's so, so good. It's very gentle. The bristles are like a silicone bristle. So it's very soft. It's not hard at all, but I would highly recommend that. But that should help you. That should help to get, get rid of those flakes. Um, that just keep coming back. Um, now, if it is dandruff, if it is if it is dandruff, then like I said before, um, tea tree oil is going to be amazing for that. Um, I would even do an ACV rinse for pH balance because a lot of time dandruff and flakes can come from the pH of the scalp being way off. You know, so I would definitely try that too. Okay. 
okay, I'm going to go because you guys know we will be on here until 10 o'clock. So I love you guys so much. Thank you guys for joining. Um, we are at 120 likes. If we can get this video to 130 likes, if you have not liked this video as of yet, please be sure to like this video. Um, like I said, I'll definitely be back. I'm trying to think. Next week, I'm going to be live on Instagram. So I'll post that in the community, um, the YouTube community. Um, so you guys can join me on Instagram next week live. And then I'll be back here the following week. So what I'm trying to do is Instagram, YouTube, Instagram, YouTube. So that's my plan um, when it comes to being live. But I hope you guys enjoy this session. I will definitely save this live. So if you joined um, towards the middle or the end, you can go back. Get yourself, first of all, go get you some popcorn. That's like a low carb snack. Yeah, that's fine. Get you some popcorn or some fruit. Okay. Get some water, some sparkling water, and you can watch the beginning of this, um, this live. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I love you guys so much. I'm about to go get some rest. I'm so tired. I took like an hour and a half nap and it just was not enough. So, but I'm about to go ahead and do that. So she's having pizza. <laughs> Listen, I hear you, girl. I hear you. It'd be like that sometimes. Well, enjoy your pizza. Live, work, clean. Enjoy your pizza. Eat it for me. Hopefully you got some pepperoni on yours, some sausage. <sighs> okay, anyway, I love you guys.